Hi there everyone, beautiful people. Welcome back to English with Catherine. It's Friday again. It seems like only yesterday it was Friday, but it was actually Thursday. So I guess you're expecting another video. Well, I haven't got one. Joking! <laughs> so I've made quite a few videos now about daily English. So small talk and reactions and English you need to survive in England or somewhere where there's natives. But what about English that we need for discussions, debates, opinions, views, feelings, emotions, deeper subjects and passionate opinions? Now, before you watch this video, be sure to check out my other video about alternative ways to say I think. It will kind of act as an introduction to what's to come in this one. So go on, go and watch it and I'll see you back here in 10 minutes. So when do we need English for deeper conversations? Well, picture this, you're at a dinner party or a social event and you're having coffee on the sofa. I was going to film this video on the sofa, but I was feeling a bit sleepy and I thought I might fall asleep in the video. So it's much better to stand up. Anyway, imagine you get into a deep conversation. You've had a few glasses of wine, so that definitely helps with your English. But you can't just invent stuff that you don't know. And what if they ask you how you feel about something like politics or inflation or anything and you don't really know how to answer the question? Panic! And even more annoying, imagine that you actually feel really strongly about what they've asked you. You have a really passionate view on that and you just can't communicate that. How frustrating is that? And if you're a clever, academic, passionate, intelligent, deep, individual, you want that to come across in your English identity, don't you? That's really important. If that's not coming across and you're not able to communicate that, then you're never going to feel like you are your authentic self when you're speaking English. Because our views and our feelings make us who we are. So let's have a look at that. This deep and meaningful conversation could be anything from something silly like does pineapple belong on a pizza? <laughs> I'll be talking about that in a second. To the biggest question of all time, what is the meaning of life? And you could need this language at dinner parties, social events, events to do with your children at school, even job interviews. In this video, I'm going to take you through the responses to four questions, ranging from really silly and trivial to really deep. And I'm going to give you some tips of how to have a very considerate, polite debate that is not too heated, that will be like a lovely tennis game of opinions and views that will help you enjoy the experience. Let's get started, shall we? Number one, does pineapple belong on a pizza? Thoughts? So let's start with a really silly but very important question that seems to get people's backs up. And that means, create a real reaction in some people. I have talked to some people who feel very passionately about this, even more passionately than other things like politics. <laughs> so I'm going to have to come clean and tell you that I am massively in favour of the pineapple pizza. Sorry. When I was a student, I discovered the Hawaiian pizza at Domino's. And this pizza got me through some really difficult times. I used to use the little voucher tokens uh, to eat, basically. I hadn't eat, I just didn't eat, otherwise I didn't really cook back then. <laughs> and I think the pineapple creates the perfect balance between sweet and savoury. So seriously, I love it. What do we say if we get asked this question? If you are like me and you really, really like it, and it tends to be either love or hate, I've noticed, if you love it, we can say, for me, I 100% love it. It really works. It's a yes from me. And if you don't, we have this way of saying something when we think it's so strange and we say, it's just wrong. <laughs> That's what we say. It's just wrong. Pineapple on a pizza is just wrong. Don't knock it until you try it. Number two, do you think people will still listen to the radio or will the radio even exist in five years or 10 years time? Here we have a question that's a bit deeper than the pizza question and is quite thought-provoking, especially for me, 
who was an avid radio listener when I was younger, and now, I have to say, it doesn't really feature so much in my life. So I know I normally talk about vocabulary in my videos, but here's some grammar. You're going to want to use the first conditional to form an opinion. I'll show you. If podcasts continue to get more popular, radio listeners will decline. Now, the first conditional isn't really about opinion, to be honest, it's about fact, but this can still really support your view to fill out your argument a bit. And it just sounds really good, so you give a kind of prediction in that sense. And then if you want to say something that maybe goes against what you've just said, we then say, having said that, having said that, so having said that, older people, I think, will always listen to the radio, especially if they've lost their partner. Um, having the radio on is just a comfort because there's always a voice talking. I know my granny, when after my grandpa passed away, she just loved the radio and had it on all day long. I think she even left it on when she went out so that she could come home and there would be a voice talking. The word reckon is really great here. We use I reckon to replace I think but what it really means is I predict based on some evidence. So I personally reckon radio will be still in existence, but it will have dramatically declined. What do you think? Tell me in the comments below. So these days I listen to the radio when I'm cooking, actually, I do that. But I also like to tune in to Classic FM in the mornings. It's a really nice way to wake up slowly. And then I have a massive cup of coffee and then that just like <laughs> jolts me into the day. <laughs> Number three, politics. Now, even if you're not that interested in politics like me, you still should probably have an opinion on the big things that are going on. Because you might be a bit embarrassed if someone asks you and you just have no idea. But then again, who cares what people think? I mean, no judgments. <laughs> now, if you do feel strongly about politics, the trick here is to not get too heated and remain polite for the whole conversation. People might ask you, if you're in the UK especially, uh, where do you stand when it comes to Brexit? How do you feel about Brexit? What was your reaction when Brexit was announced? I was so shocked when that news came out. I thought it was a joke. I didn't think it was real. <gasps> Terrible. As far as I'm concerned, and that's a nice way of saying I think, but it's a really kind of good way to introduce an opinion in, on politics, okay? So as far as I'm concerned, Brexit was a really bad decision, or Brexit was a big mistake, depending on your standpoint, of course. Now here, another grammar point, we can actually use the third conditional here to reflect on the past and how the past has influenced the present. If Liz Truss hadn't resigned after 45 days, as Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak would not have had the chance to be in power. So you've talked about how the past has influenced the present there, and that is very common to use that construction when talking about politics, because very often you need to reference the past, because that's so important, isn't it? That all leads up to the result of what's happening now. You can also use the construction on one hand and on the other hand, this tends to be when you give a positive and then a negative to a situation. It helps you build an argument by presenting pros and cons. For example, on one hand, Boris Johnson was a great Prime Minister because of his sense of humour, his character, which really helped us get through the pandemic, just with his spirit. On the other hand, he acted like a total buffoon when he got found out for having those illegal drinks parties in the middle of the lockdown, really not cool. And lastly, if you're not that interested in politics and you just want to give a really short summary of how you feel, you can use the expression in a nutshell. And that just means in a short summary. So in a nutshell, I support Labour or whatever it is. It just helps to keep everything concise and maybe even let the listener know that you're not really that interested in politics. <laughs> politely, of course. Now, when you're actually having the debate or the discussion and you don't agree with what someone has said, you can say, I understand where you're coming from, but have you considered this? 
Now that's a really nice way to say, yeah, I see what you're saying, or maybe I don't. But what about this? So it's not just saying, you're wrong, stop talking. Or shut up, just listen to me. If you really find that it's getting a bit heated and it's no longer enjoyable, you can just say, agree to disagree. Agree to disagree. And that just ends it on a really nice note that's civilized and respectful. Number four, the meaning of life. Now this might come up just as a joke when you've had a few drinks, but it also might just come up if you're really interested in having a really deep chat. Maybe you're really getting to know someone and you're really bonding with them and you've got good chemistry and you're creating a really good rapport. So if someone asks you, what do you think the meaning of life is? What's it all about? Why are we here? Instead of saying something really depressing like, life is futile, don't say that. <laughs> here are some options for what you could say. So a grammar point again, you could use the first conditional. If you build something real in your life, it might still exist after you've gone. That's really nice, isn't it? You leave something behind, your legacy, and that's the meaning of life to you. Maybe that's how you feel. We can also use the expression end goal. Okay, let me show you. I think the end goal is finding a life that is meaningful. So in other words, your ultimate goal in life is to live with meaning, have some purpose to your life, some substance. I definitely agree with that one. Or you could choose just one word. Variety is the meaning of life. Food is the meaning of life. Love is the meaning of life. Now here are some extra tips on how to have a really great, meaningful, deep conversation. Be open with the person. Let them in on your vulnerability. They are much more likely to relax around you and open up to you as well. Ask open-ended questions. So in other words, questions that don't just have a yes or no answer. This will encourage more conversation to occur. Consider being the first one to share personal information and that will gain the other person's trust or the other people's trust and then they will be more likely to share their views with you. Adopt an attitude of genuine curiosity about what the other person is saying. Be thoughtful and try to put yourself in the other person's shoes as much as you can to see it from their perspective. Listen actively and ask follow-up questions. It's not enough to just sit there and be like, yeah. Ask questions to show that you're interested. And these are all the differences between having a deep conversation and having small talk, which is what I've been talking about for most of my videos up to now. <laughs> well, we've reached the end of the video. It's goodbye, guys. But not forever. Next Friday, there will be another video. There'll be some more communication with you and it will be wonderful. I'm wishing you the most incredible weekend and I'll see you next Friday for another video. Bye.